Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today, we're going to be talking about hematomas and hemorrhages in the nervous system, but first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of your screen. In addition, consider subscribing to our Facebook page, as well as our uh, checking out our website and Instagram, all entitled Adventures in Neuropathology. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only, and it's not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have a question or a concern about your health, please talk to your doctor. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about hematomas and hemorrhages in the brain, and we're going to be looking at this microscopically. I have a few other videos talking about hem hematomas and hemorrhages in the brain macroscopically, or looking at the gross impression on the gross examination, but here we're going to be looking at the microscopic appearance of uh, hematomas and hemorrhages. So this uh, uh, um, image that we're looking at right now, it's a low power view and we can see that there's all this red stuff here. There's red and red and red. These are red blood cells. Typically red blood cells are supposed to be within your blood vessels and here they are outside of the blood vessels because they've bled out of the blood vessels. And so that's the hemorrhage part of this discussion. Um, the, the red blood cells are bleeding out of the blood vessels and they form a mass occupying lesion or space occupying lesion, um, essentially a, a bloody mass called a hematoma. And within the hematoma, after it's been there for a little while, you can start to get fibroblast proliferation. Sometimes you get these lines of zon, uh, which are associated with fibrin deposition and fibroblast um, proliferation. This is uh, this, this wispy pink stuff is uh, fibrin, which is um, a, a substance that is located within the bloodstream uh, that helps to um, stop you from bleeding. And uh, so these are the lines of zon, and then over here we have this uh, dense fibroblastic proliferation, and it's associated with acute inflammation. Uh, sometimes when the neurosurgeons are looking at this, this can have a little bit of a, a yellow tan look to it, might look a little uh, concerning. Maybe they think there might be a lesion in there, so they uh, send it to the pathologist so that we can check it out. But um, in fact, it, it's, it's uh, nothing concerning. It's just fibroblast proliferation. Um, and a bunch of uh, a little bit of a acute inflammation associated with the body trying to resorb that um, blood. Here's another low power view. Um, I've I've got a few squares here to, just to show uh, what's going on um, on a on a high power view. Um, so again, we we have a, a bunch of blood, and here all this area is this is uh, kind of a little bit of old blood that has this a little bit of a hyalinized look to it. Whereas these areas that are more red, these are um, more um, fresh red blood cells, um, and um, uh, so, so what we have here is acute inflammation associated with this blood. Again, here is a, another area where we can look on higher power or greater magnification, and we can see that there, uh, again, there's this a, a little bit of acute inflammation, and you can get acute inflammation in infectious processes, but basically this is a reactive type process where the body's trying to resorb this blood. In addition, uh, um, sometimes the fibrin deposition associated with the blood, it, it forms these little um, spider web um, guys, and sometimes these spider webs can form these little um, pseudo-vascular channels. We can see here one, two, maybe three, four, five, and uh, these are very... Um, random and irregular. Uh, basically that fibrin deposition is just forming in these little kind of spider web formations, very irregular and organized. And then sometimes it can just form these little pseudo vascular channels. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that sometimes in a, in a hematoma, um, um, it, it might have the appearance of a vascular malformation or some sort of vascular lesion. So when these things are being evaluated um, uh, clinically, it can almost look like there's a vascular lesion within a, a hemorrhagic lesion, which can 
uh, spur uh, surgeons to be more aggressive in taking this out because they think it's an actual lesion. But um, looking at it microscopically, we can say that no, in fact, it, it's not a lesion. It's just um, fibrin deposition and, and part of this organizing process where uh, the body is starting to resorb this blood. Um, all right. So here is another low power view. Again, we have a, a bunch of uh, recent blood and then kind of older blood that's being resorbed here. Um, on, on this side here, we've got some uh, um, fibrous proliferation. And then occasionally, sometimes within fibrous proliferations, you can get a little bit of atypia uh, cells. These are um, atypical fibroblast cells, and this is nothing to worry about. Basically, the fibroblasts are... are proliferating, they're reactive, they're responding to this blood and, and they're trying to uh, organize this blood and so they get really revved up and you can get some um, a little bit of atypia there, uh, but it's nothing to worry about. All right, so that is our very brief overview of uh, hemorrhages and hematomas in the nervous system. Check us out at Adventures in Neuropathology on our website, uh, Facebook page, and Instagram all entitled Adventures in Neuropathology. Okay, thank you.